Hi guys, welcome to New Junction. Something new for the layout today, this Class 37 in the Colas Rail livery. Stay tuned, stick around and find out how I get it ready for the layout. So first things first, the inspection. When you've carefully removed it from the box, bearing in mind that uh, in most cases they've either been transported direct through the post to yourselves or the shops you purchased them from, um, often the fine details on these locos can be damaged in some way. Um, and this is the perfect time to just double check that because if a, a loco has to go back, there's nothing worse than having chipped one, run one in, spending all that time only to find it's got to go back and you've got to unchip it. <laughs> the things I look out for um, most commonly are that things like the buffers are in place, um, that they can often be bent or pulled out of place, also the NEM pockets, things like that, making sure they've not been smashed around. Um, in this instance on the Class 37 you can just see the little antenna there, and um, there's one on both ends, they can sometimes be bent um, or snapped off entirely. More often than not, details now are not part of the original mould of the loco and they're sort of stuck on in the factory. So if there are any sub-details or name plates or um, even warning stickers like you see on the right hand side here, um, or sort of these kind of details, these are not these are part of the mould but uh, um, you want to double check that they're all there and in place and you're happy with them. Now it's always worth giving the undercarriage an inspection making sure none of the pickups touching the wheels as you can see in the gaps have been bent out of place during shipping. Um, these engines can be sat in shop cabinets for a long while so often the wheels can be a bit dirty um, or dusty um, and may need a little clean beforehand. This is a bit rare but uh, especially on a new loco, but you never know. Um, particularly the detail on the moving axle itself, if that's pulled off, just want to make sure it's nice and sat nice and firm, um, ready for you to uh, use it on your layout. Now I've done my uh, inspection of the loco, I'm very happy with it. Um, I can see that even, even in this cabin here, the driver is still in situ and in his seat, so he's not come dislodged at all and there's no scuffs or marks. So the next step is uh, to take the shell off using the uh, instructed method on the instructions and we'll uh, go on about chipping it. So here we are, six screws and one sprung buffer later, the uh, engine casing just lifts off nice and easy, revealing the, uh, the motor it's housing and the uh, lovely blanking plate. Now, normally what we'd do is we'd be removing the blanking chip on this 21-pin loco and putting a 21-pin DCC chip straight in. But uh, as I've got the uh, Hornby TTS decoder, which is an 8-pin chip, I need to put in a converter first. So what I've got here um, is an EZ command 21-pin to 8-pin chip, converter chip which will literally um, sit where the blanking chip is and then uh, provide me with an 8-pin socket for the uh, sound decoder. Now that that uh, conversion chip is in, we can get the uh, sound uh, chip out. And here it is. As you can see on the just here is the 8 pin chip um, and then of course it's got a speaker. Um, the joy of this Batman model is it is sound ready. Now what that means is somewhere on this loco there is meant to be space for a speaker. 
Now I happen to know that on the uh, 37, in the body, um, which roughly sits just here, on the roof, just under the fan, you can see there is a compartment with two screws. Um, that should drop out, leaving enough room to place a speaker in. What we're going to find out the fun way is if that uh, will fit a Hornby TTS speaker. So let's give it a go. So, having removed the fan compartment out of the uh, shell of the Loco, that reveals uh, so much space. So roughly, if you can see that, if I focus you in, um, above the uh, motor housing, um, that's roughly how much room we have, that thickness there. Um, as you can see with the Hornby TTS speaker, um, which is considerably larger, it's probably a, a third again when it's side by side, um, that's just not going to fit. I will double check, but it doesn't look like it's going to fit in the, uh, in the space provided. So as you can see, with the shell back on and the speaker pushed up as far as it can go, um, you can see that the shell is still just sat too proud of the uh, the chassis which doesn't look good at all and it won't uh, screw back in so luckily we have a trick up our sleeve in the sense that uh, with the Hornby speaker you can actually take it out of this plastic housing and make it a uh, smaller footprint so that's the next step and we'll see if that fits so as you can see the speaker comes in a uh, a thick plastic case. What we can do is just pop that out and you can see the thickness of that is a third again of the, uh, the actual case it comes in. That should, all being well, be able to push up into the space uh, left available to us on the uh, Class 37 on this Batman model. And you can already see how much a, of a lower profile that is compared to the original case. Let's see if I can uh, get the shell on. It's worth noting at this point that um, with another brand of speaker that would sit quite happily on the space provided on the Backman model. Because the TTS speaker is a circle, um, it sits too proud of the space available so it still has to sit lower so I won't be able to screw this back up into the top of the shell. So I'll have to lose the, the fan cover for now while I'm using the TTS speaker. If I was to ever upgrade the speaker, it would probably fit inside uh, inside here. And there we are. That's all housed nicely. When we get that on the layout, we'll give it a test and see if it's worked. Um, just for reference, when you're looking for a space for a speaker, on a more newer release, where the main body of the loco tends to be filled with the uh, sort of solid engine housing. Um, more often than not, they either want you to put it in the ceiling, like on this one, in the roof cavity, sorry, or in the fuel tanks underneath. So that's always one to check, um, just for future reference. Now, depending on what you're going to be doing with the loco, um, for example, my layout is more geared up towards continuous running. So that means this engine will be pulling something, um, or pushing, but only one end will be used to couple with a train. Um, if you were using sort of a, having a depot sort of layout or a back and forth, um, you might need the couplings on both sides. Um, if you're doing some shunting, for example, um, whereas I will only need them on one side because the local will always be pulling. Um, so what I'm going to do is remove this coupling from one side, and then I'm going to apply the detail to one half. Now for this particular model, these are the uh, accessories to go on it. Um, obviously the main one is instead of the uh, NEM coupling, you've got a snow plough which goes in the same slot. Um, on top of that you've got uh, the actual modelled coupling, um, the air brake hose etc and the jumper cable, um, and they slot into the uh, front of the loco. As with all models, it seems, they give you these instructions as to where they go in black and white. So it's very difficult to know where, um, which ones go in which hole. So a bit of trial and error here. And there we are. 
Now this is always a stressful time for any uh, <laughs> uh, hobbyist because more often than not these um, accessories and things don't tend to fit the uh, holes that, that, that's been provided for you. Um, whether that's due to uh, the thickness of paint that's gone in and around as they've sprayed the loco um, or whatnot. But uh, I was quite lucky in this instance because they all went in. The only ones I've had to leave off um, are the air brake hoses um, just here because they uh, hit the uh, plough. So I don't really want to force the issue. So what I'm going to do now is put all these away, um, including the, uh, the spare NEM coupling. Um, any spares such as the uh, the speaker housing I took took off the blanking chip, and the uh, the roof cavity with the fan, which I took off earlier, they're all going to go in the uh, the same box. Um, just so if I ever need to uh, come back to this engine, all the bits are nicely stored away and safe. So now we're uh, ready to go. The loco is ready to be run in, and uh, the sounds tested. So, over to the layout for the fun bit. So here we are in the loft, and it's on the track. So first things first, turn the lights on, see if it works. There we go. And what we're going to do is set it off running um, at a relatively fast pace for sort of half an hour in both directions. Right, so there we are. It's now been running around the layout. Um, it's still a touch jerky, but then it is brand new. I should probably change some of the CV settings on it as well. Um, what I've also done is taken the hood back off and just taped down the wires, just so they're uh, nicely tucked out of the way. Um, I don't do that to start with, just in case I have to take the chip out. Um, I've also taken it over to the programming track and reprogrammed the chip. Um, so its uh, number is different now, not the standard number three. So all that's left really is to turn on the uh, the speaker and uh, let it go and join the fleet. So I'll leave you with a few shots of it running around, pulling my network rail train. So thank you again for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Bye.